And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today it's time to finally finish off this planet. I keep realizing there's more and more stuff that needs doing here before we can leave. First off, we need to put in a bunch of launchers here. We need to be able to launch all of our solid methane to other planets. Uh, that's a lot of meth. I mean, how much have we actually got on site that we haven't been using yet? Uh, that's uh, 344 tons of this stuff. It's 344 tons of natural gas. Could take a while to spend all of that if we're not careful. Ooh, plastic. We can print that back home. Anyway, before I got so distracted, what we need to do is get our building crew and move them over here for a little bit. And then we need to turn this entire place into an interplanetary launcher section. We have plenty of rads coming in. Over here we have, let's see, 8,000, 9,000, 9,000, 9,000. We got a lot of thousands there, and then we got another 16 and 15,000 over here. We should have enough to launch masses, just masses of resources. But these things are going to get in the way, so time for them to go into orbit and then come down over here. We'll have to reinstall all the doors again, which will of course get incinerated when we leave, but that's fine. We can deconstruct them. That should free up all of this area over here, and it's got to be filled with interplanetary launchers. You see, we've got all the rads here, and we need the interplanetary launchers all the way along here, so this just, there's there's too much junk in the way. This has all got to go. We might have to use the move the payload openers as well. We're going to need about 10 launchers, maybe 11, if we want to also launch the, uh, oh, where is it? Yes, this stuff down here, the sulfur. Actually, how's the sulfur doing? Uh... Some of it's as low as minus 67. We should keep an eye on that, though. I was warned that that could potentially melt in there. Mm, unlikely, though. What does this stuff me melt at? Sulfur melts at 115 degrees. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. The temperature should never get that low in there. And, yeah, yeah, we'll worry about that later. For now, we're going to rip this place apart and start prepping it for launchers. We can also get rid of those solar panels. Unfortunately, our crews are actually running low on oxalite, so we're just going to send them back home for a little bit to grab some more resources. We could fire over oxalite, but it gets complicated with, well, it vents into the background of space quite easily. Plus, there is a couple of things we need to cover while they're en route. Namely, uh, we made a few changes here. We moved this gas range from outside to inside. Uh, turns out, does not affect, in the slightest, having a great hall, putting a, a, a giant gas furnace in there. I don't, I can't believe I didn't realize that before. In fact, you could put in uh, an electric grill as well, it seems. So an electric grill, gas range, whatever, throw them all in there. Great use of the extra space. Now, we can't put in any, any automation, but I'm sure we could find workarounds for that in the next base design. Oh, and over here, I built in some doors, brought over a pip, and we wild planted some thimble reed. Reason being, I'm not sure we were going to get enough reed fiber out of here. There's just, uh, this base was supposed to be self-sufficient entirely, but I'm thinking we may need a few pieces of wild reed fiber everywhere you go, just because even with the, the showers and the toilets and everything like that, it wasn't producing enough water to give us enough reed fiber. How much have we got on site at the moment? Uh, we're not, it's, we've got nine pieces and we did have 10 at one, or 11 at one point, so I think we were going through it faster than we had uh, use for it. Though so maybe it'll slow down now that we've uh, stopped most of our construction here. All right, give us a few minutes while uh, we gear up the crew and bring them back to finish this place off. There is particularly something badass about those interplanetary payloads. They do look pretty awesome sauce landing. Uh, we do have this thing auto sweeper here set up to grab them, but unfortunately sometimes our dupes decide to take that job. So I think we're going to move this whole thing up parallel with the interplanetary launchers. In fact, I'm thinking planetary interplanetary launchers like that. Hmm. Give me a minute here to come up with a, a sort of design. I'm thinking something like that looks about right. Uh, the trick to remember is that targeting beacon, the payloads can land three tiles to the left of it and two tiles to the right. So if we do this correctly, we shouldn't have to worry. Oh, wait. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, we should be fine. We should be okay. Put in a few metal tiles there. It'll be a little bit messy at first, but I think we can get this to work. We have moved the targeting beacon up here. That means the shells will land either three tiles to the left, which is inside the autosweeper range, or two tiles to the right, which is still inside the autosweeper range. It'll all get dumped into the payload opener, and that will shunt the water down here. Water passes through a little radiant pipe there, blob of uh, nuclear waste. That keeps the autosweeper from overheating. Done. Problem solved. Now we just have to, well, build all the interplanetary launchers. We need ten of them. And maybe an 11th if we want to do sulfur. So let's just start them up. I think we'll use lead as flooring for the lot of it. And just that lead will help 
insulate the rest of the base from all of that lovely juicy radioactivity that's coming down on top of us. Each one of these is going to be firing one kilo of methane at a different planet. So we're going to have to stick down these thingies here, the uh, the, me the control meters. Uh, no, that should allow us to build them. Oh, put one there as well. We need to put automation wires in between them. All you have to do is put those down. This comes in here, we meter it out to one kilo per second, and then we just stick an automation wire through it to reset it. And hopefully that should work. Though honestly, never tried this before, so it's going to be interesting. There we have 11 interplanetary launchers, nine, 10 of which are configured to fire one kilo. Actually, yep. there we go. We'll just copy and paste that all the way along. Done. Now all we have to do is get the methane from down here all the way up to the top of the map. Uh, yeah, we're going to have reproducing way too much to start, but I'm thinking, say, that can be an overflow. Yeah, something like that. And cancel that out. Now what should happen, if there's nowhere to go, it'll pop back there. Otherwise, it's going to continue all up the map and we're going to use steel. Oh, this is going to cost so much steel. This is going to cost an absolutely gargantuan amount of steel, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Actually, no, we don't want to pass through there. We'll actually, if we pass through there, there's actually some liquid there. So if we do pa pass through that section, we would probably freeze a whole bunch of stuff we don't want to. Oh, we do have some iron ore. Mm. And I don't want to pass through those tiles either, so maybe get rid of that one. Yeah, let's maybe use some of the iron ore we've got relying around the place. That might save us a little bit of resources uh, there. Oh, let me think. How are we going to get it up there? There we go. Easy peasy. We'll just run this up here and then run it all the way along the bottom and pay the enormous amount of iron ore it's going to take to ferry it all the through there. Yeah, I don't think the game was designed for this. I'm, I'm still getting the odd freezes now and then. Not even when it's saving. It just locks up every so often. And we haven't even started the water planet yet. The water planet's the next one we want to do. Namely because the water planet is where all the water comes from to get here. I also want to automate that so that we can shut off the water automatically. Uh, right now I have to manually turn the water on and off when we get too much. And that of course can't last. Currently the water transport is switched off. Namely because we, we don't need any more. We've got absolutely oodles of the stuff on the oil planet. Also we may have accidentally fired over some water here. Um, yeah, how do I explain this one for dumbness? So you see there's all this steam here. I, I was trying to figure out where that steam came from, and it turns out it came from back here. Um, actually, no, that's that's incorrect. It didn't come from our home planet. It actually came from this interstellar ocean. What accidentally happened was the interstellar ocean stuff was launched back here, which gave us some salt water. I wanted to take that salt water and dump it into our steam room. So I set up a few bottle emptiers and set them to dump it all in there. Unfortunately, they were set to level three. And from a long, long time ago, I had some bottle emptiers set up here to let salt water and dump it into the reactor so we could get rid of salt water. So I accidentally started dumping salt water in here and occasionally this pump would get a blob of it. Like it would fall down here and before it could boil, it would get sucked up by the liquid pump and then tiny little blobs of salt water were getting sent up all the way to here, ending up inside the interplanetary launcher, getting fired over to Dampona and then getting pumped in here with the rest of this stuff where it would instantly turn into steam. Yeah, um, so little things like that. It's just those minor little things that can cause problems. But yes, uh, once we have this finished, or once we have the interplanetary launcher set up, we want to come over here and set up a base probably around here and use the methane, fire over methane to run the base and get rid of all those nasty solar panels. We, we don't want to be using that. That doesn't come from a coup. All right, let's get this finished. It should be pretty quick. I noticed a little bit of a problem I didn't anticipate, and that was when these things are coming up here on the rails. Some of them are not full-sized. I was expecting 20 kilo packets. Well, that's what I thought I was going to get, but instead I'm getting like 17.1 there. There's another 20, 16.2. That's going to mess with the metering out because it, it'll let through one kilo at a time, but if just say there's only 0.1 of a kilo left, it'll let through the 0.1 of a kilo and it'll cause a gap in the flow. So what we want to do is we're probably going to have to make some sort of loading station here where we load all the stuff up. That could get a little tricky though, we're going to need a little bit of space for that and we're going to need a transfer medium for temperature because this place is entirely in a vacuum. Well, we vacuumed the whole place out because it seemed like a good idea at the time and it's kind of working in our favor. Uh, what we're going to do is here, we actually have a pipe of super coolant here. So I think we drop 10 kilos there, a little blob of it will flop down here and it will roll across there and spill, which is annoying, but we'll just immediately sweep that up, mop that up, go on. No, don't eat it. No, no, 
Seriously, heavy metal pipe, don't eat that stuff. That's bad for you. Okay, you'll... Fine, fair enough. That's the way you want to do it. And that should give us a bit of a transfer medium. Then we'll just put down some shipping here. There we go. Perfection. That should keep everything cool. We've got power coming in as well. And then all we have to do is select consumable ore, grab methane, and... Done. Now that should all come out as 20 kilo packets. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And the super coolant there is also drenched in super cold methane, so we shouldn't have any problems at overheating. The whole thing should then be fine. That'll siphon up to the top of the map. And done. Oh, okay, I think we can finally leave. I'm not going to hook that up just yet. That's close enough that at any point we can just hook it up if we want to. Same with all the rest along. But this should allow us to fire one kilo of methane per second at the first planet we're going to be going to. And that planet is going to be the aquatic one. Damp Dampona? How much is that going to cost in rads? 90 rad bolts to launch. That's fine. We only need to launch three a cycle. That'll give us 600 kilos. There's six. There's uh, 600 seconds in a cycle. So if we're putting in one kilo per second, that or, that means it will be launching three three of these payloads per cycle, which is 270 rad bolts. Considering over here alone, we're developing what? Uh, give me give me a listing. Uh, 17,000, or well, 1,735, there you have to take off the last zero. So yeah, we've got plenty of rad bolts per cycle coming in from these, they should be more than sufficient. Now, there is one problem though, they require power. Uh, we need to find a transformer to hook them up to, but I didn't leave a transformer area. Hmm. Give me oh, I got an idea. I say we use a dumb plan. So the incredibly dumb idea is we're going to put a little layer of super coolant here on the bottom for this large power transformer, and then we are going to run insulated pipes through here, wait, radiant pipes through here, and those radiant pipes are going to carry the exhaust water from the steam turbines. So the steam turbine exhaust water is going to be the coolant for this steel power transformer. Yeah, I, I really feel like I should have planned things out a little bit better here, but you know, I'm okay with this. All we need now is just a little bit of super coolant to make this a reality. At the same time, there's one other thing I want to do and set us up for sending more uranium over. This whole thing runs on uranium and we've got uh, 5.8 tons here, which is enough to keep this going for 580 cycles, 10 kilos per cycle. So yeah, 580 cycles is fine, but what I want to do is any more uranium that gets sent over. Oh, actually, deconstruct that. And I actually have to replace this ladder, damn it. Any more uranium that gets sent over will immediately just get shunted down here and dropped off right there where that auto sweeper can pick it up, store it in this until it's needed, and then dump it into the conveyor loader when necessary. That should mean whenever we need to top this place up with uranium, we don't even need to step foot on this planet or do any manual tube later. We just have to fire it over from wherever we're making it, which will probably end up being our core world or industrial planet. Uh, I do need to put some ladder segments up there. What I did was I deleted the ladder segments up there because I didn't want any duplicates coming up here to try and manually unload or load the payload openers. Plus, once we activate this and we start firing rad bolts across here, I really don't want any dupes up here because it's going to be a lot of rad bolts along this section. This is going to be rad bolt central. And if they're running around up here, they're going to be dead dupes. So we may have made an accidental teeny tiny weensy eensy beensy little mistake. Uh, when we were bringing the methane out of here, some of it appears to have melted uh, and turned into natural gas, which has uh, contaminated things slightly. But it's okay. It's only a small amount, and I think I figured out what happened. Uh, this, where is it? This conveyor rail here? This conveyor rail was going through here, and I think a tiny piece was on the rail, and it melted because it was on the rail. Well, that's my sincere hope. So what I've done is I've moved everything up here so it's a drop down, and, and it'll just be big blobs of methane. So none of it should be on a rail, exchanging temperature very easily, and uh, the gas shouldn't be, you know, causing any problems. Now, we still have two gas pumps here. This one, the, uh, the, the gas pipes weren't finished, but now they've been replaced, and I think... Okay, it'll probably be fine. Right now, everyone's doing a giant sweep. Oh, God. What's that? That looked like a giant blob of that just melted. Oh, no. Yeah, why are these empty? What, what's going on? Oh, no. Um, You guys need to start moving. Yep. 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 And yep. Just, just keep going. We've got all of those set up ready to go. Uh, do you need to be set up? You know what? We'll continue it on. The whole way. Just, just bring it on. Oh, and that reminds me, this needs to be set to one unit. 
Oh, the 500 added set too. Ooh, okie doke. And I should probably be powered that as well. That would be an idea. Mm. No, the powering can come later. Just so long as we get most of that methane out of there and maybe disabled. Yeah, the loading is disabled. Oh, God. Uh, give me a few minutes. I gotta clean this mess up. We're just we're, we're just gonna start throwing in more gas pumps. We need to get this stuff out of here before it causes an explosion. If that melts, we're... I, I don't know what we're gonna do. That's gonna be a, just hundreds of tons of methane just exploding in here. No, 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 no. I need... Damn it, I need to come up with a new solution here. Uh, hmm, let me think. We're just gonna tap directly into these metal tiles, which are 207 degrees. We're going to use a diamond temperature shift plate, and we're going to suck the temperature out here and put it into the supercoolant. Yep, because that's, that's, of course, a sane and reasonable thing to do. Okay, there we go. Whew. Uh, it's not spreading as far as I'd like, but it's still far enough for now that it's not horrifying. Oh, okay. Now we'll just get the last of the gas out. That'll take a few minutes, but we've got four gas pumps working flat out. How's our power looking? Yeah, grand. God, I was just about ready to leave this planet. All we were doing was just a giant sweep, you know, to improve performance. We'll, we'll finish that off, but I think... I think we're good. Assuming nothing else horrifying happens in the next few minutes, we should just be able to get out of here. Uh, though I'll probably want to rethink this strategy. I'm not sure if I want to leave it this way. To help prevent the, such a travesty from happening in the future, what we've done is installed an automatic dispenser, and we're going to move all the methane one tile to the right. And then we're going to put all the stuff that needs cooling right here. It can get cooled by this section, and this methane that's here will not be affected by it at all. In fact, we may just end up... Hmm. We can put that back to there. Yeah, that bypasses all of the cooling section, but we don't have to worry about this methane get, get messing with this at all. Should be much safer. To help speed things along slightly, we just installed a whole bunch more gas pumps. Seems, you know, a whole bunch of mini gas pumps takes no time to install. We can chuck them down everywhere, just give them a tiny amount of power, and slowly but surely we're managing to drain out the last of the gas. Oh, okay. Crisis averted. We can get back to doing what we were me meant to do, which was... Well, start firing up these cannons. In fact, let's turn this on now. All right, those two should start charging. They'll fire one out there, one out there, and then they should all get fired along this direction. Uh, what are you set to? 50? You know, we'll let the first one fire, then we'll crank them up to 500. And... God damn it. I'm completely off. Yep. Spent all that time building it and completely built it one tile wrong. That is, um, that's just exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. All of the Radbolt reflectors should be in the right place, probably. We've got 500 Radbolts coming in. They go, oh, yeah, no. They go in, they get fired along. And, of course, none of the others are turned on just yet. But it gets all the way to the end here and depending on what happens for example if we don't if we want to charge up the red bolt engines here we can just let it fly through if we don't we can turn it up and send it right back along the line of course we'll get collisions but we don't really care and done that should provide us with all the red bolts we need for our engines and how is the gas is looking down here please tell me it's done oh thankfully I'm leaving all those gas pumps there. I'm not removing them this time. They can just stay there. And for now, we're going to have that methane get swept up. Uh, all the new methane. Oh, we're going to snip you. Great. Uh, okay, well, we'll leave you connected until we get a break. Then we'll snip you. I've been noticing something a bit odd here. Uh, when it comes to these, they're all 193.4. What until I get to here? Then it goes to 181, 181, 193.4... All the way until I get up to here, and then it's 181.1. There used to be a tile there, so I think it's exchanging heat with the tile beneath it. Uh, over here it's fine because it's an insulated tile. And then the rest of them are all 193.4. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove those tiles. So if we get rid of those, temperature should no longer change in those. And then what we'll do is we'll just uh, move this on a bit. Uh, we'll let it through just... Off you go. And then we'll stop it afterwards. That should move them all on a little chunk. And we can see if that makes a difference. Whew. Okay. We have also made a minor change over here. We've stuck in an automation broadcaster. That's unnamed. We'll... Actually, that's going to be... Need water. 
oil needs water. Nope. Now what happens is anytime this liquid tank over here goes too low on the waterfront, it'll send a signal say, hey, we need more water. But that'll only happen if all of these tanks are full, but not those two. So we're going to use this when we get to the water planet to control how uh, on and off we have the, uh, the launchers over there for sending water to this planet. So far, though, seems to be working pretty good. The changes we've made seem to be working out. All I'm doing now is just rounding up the last of the critters. We're going to strand them on a few tiles just to stop them from their pathing problems. And then that will be that. Oh, one last thing. We're going to need to put a fridge right there. What I want is anytime those things drop meat, the meat gets put into that fridge so that our people can gain access to it. Anytime these guys drop meat, it'll get dumped into a fridge as well. Just uh, the bonuses are pretty nice in terms of the extra food. But over here, this is working out great. We have 38 kilos of stuffed berry. And the stuffed berry is made using pinch of pepper nuts and gristle berry. So the gristle berry we grow here, and then the pitch wild pinch of pepper nuts are, well, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. What we did is we released some pips and we removed all the other seeds, dug up everything else. So the only thing left was pinch of pepper seeds and we let them plant them everywhere. I'm still finding the odd one now and then. But I think, yep, that's that's enough. That should definitely keep everyone in pitch of pepper plants and stuffed berry. This is going to be a really happy colony. This worked out absolutely perfectly. Also, we threw in a bunch of thimble reed seeds over here, and I think even one got planted down there. So we're actually swimming in thimble reed as well. I think it's time we moved over to the next planet. After all the planning, all the building, all the preparation work, this place is done. It is absolutely finished. If anything needs to be done, it'll be like tiny minor little bits. And why are you guys not launching? Come on, get out of here. Begin launch sequence and you begin launch sequence. Yeah, except they're going to head back home, quick restock and then straight on to the water planet. And this place, I think we just leave it as it is. With those two to monitor it and take care of it, they should be able to take care of all the oil wells. And once we set up the, op the automation on Tampona to make sure that this uh, doesn't overstock with water or understock, it should never ever shut down. And for these sections over here, we can hook them up as we as we need to. Uh, why is that actually stopped already? Uh, I probably severed something, didn't I? Oh yeah, I severed this here. But we can reconnect that back up whenever we want to start sending in more methane to, well, to whatever planet we want. How much methane are you going to need? You got 29 kilos? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll hold on a bit. We've got to send everyone where they're going and our very confusing rocketry screen will probably be fine. While waiting for those uh, ships to come back, I noticed this has melted our liquid valve made of steel. This is the one that's uh, sh shuttling the, or flow controlling the thermium. I think the thermium pops some stuff. Yeah. Heat on that's got to be something ridiculous. Let's just see what this incident detail looks like. That's only 612. Mm. 691, what are you looking at? Like, you're looking at 670, and instead of a pipe that's actually damaged, you're looking at 1624 degrees. Wow, its melting point is 1849. Ceramic is close to melting because of the temperatures going through there. That's, um, probably not good. Uh, yeah, we should get our hands insulation, but not yet. We don't have time to get any access to that. Uh, do we have, oh wow, we do have someone gone off to the glittering asteroid right now. Are they on their way back? No, they're on their way there. Are they? Yeah, they're on their way there. It's fine. We can rip out all that ceramic and replace it with fresh piping just to make sure that doesn't happen again because that looks uncomfortably dangerous. I've completely replaced all the piping there and that should make sure that no more tungsten melts in there. Well, not no more, but it should be unlikely that any. And what is that in there? Inside, it almost looks like there's a lump of tungsten inside that tile. Did tungsten melt? No. Never mind. I mean, it looks like ceramics almost in there. That's okay. Now what we have to do is strip out the ships. We brought back a whole bunch of stuff, including sand. We were actually running short on it, and we need to strip the whole place out, and then it's stuck it all right back up again. Is it Wanderer? Yeah, this one. Oh, wow, this is going to take a while. Looking at the time, there is no way I'm going to get Tampoda done today. We just don't have enough time to get to it and set up a whole base. Ah. Okay, I think I'm going to have to cut this episode short today, but we'll do a longer one to, on Wednesday to make up for it. I need to put in an entire base here, and we need to feed it entirely off methane coming all the way from our, our oil planet. So this, we spent all this time setting this up so that when the time comes, we can have an uninterrupted supply of one kilo per second of methane from this planet, which should, in theory, work. And not just for that, but for every other planet in the system as well. 
I'm going to make sure. Let's see. Yeah. And yep, this is going just fine. This is not being overloaded. Everything is functioning perfectly. And I don't see any more methane in there. Oh, thankfully. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. Extra long episode on Wednesday. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.